Thank you. Thank you very no. much. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 nobody's going to check the work we do right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel. Absolutely. Let me see. Let me minimize this real quick. All right. So a little bit about the topic that I want to present to you guys today. Um, I was actually constructing this, this idea. I was just getting a little sharing with Daywood, a little bit of what I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I wanted to do something unique. You know, a lot of industry reps, they do uh, interview processes, resume workshops, things like that. But I want to kind of give you guys a feel of what it's like to actually to work inside Raytheon, work inside, you know, as actual engineer themselves. So, you know, I did this for entry-level engineers slash interns, you know, what to expect when you're actually working uh, in the facility, uh, wherever it may be, whether you're working remotely or whatever it is. But some of the, just some of the common tasks that we do as, uh, you know, industry engineers. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you guys just got to click on this. So I just want to share a little bit about what we do, you know, at uh, Raytheon Intelligence and Space. Um, cool. And you guys can see in this figure right here, um, this is one of the photos uh, that one of our photographers took in Antarctica, I believe, is uh, RFSDS system, uh, safety detection system. Uh, basically, what it does is actually detects long-range ballistic missiles. Uh, so a lot of what we do over there in El Segundo, we test military packages, radars, uh, INS, GPS systems, satellite systems, things like that. And <laughs> they come in pretty big packages inside the uh, EMI lab where I work in, uh, doing RF testing. But as you can see, this configuration we have right here is actually a live one of a facility that they use to actually detect long-range ballistic missiles. And they're all over the globe. I think they got some like in Chile. Uh, they got some in Europe, Africa also. And Raytheon maintains these guys. So if you ever get a chance to work in that department, let me know how it's like because yeah, I, I can only see pictures of it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. And a little bit of what I'm going to cover today in the presentation. Uh, just some of our sponsors, uh, the ERG that I represent, uh, Employee Resource Group, as well as the Professional Society, uh, SHIP, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. I'm part of the uh, South Bay chapter. And we have had this long going relationship with local universities, uh, CPP, uh, Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach, um, Cal State LA, and just some of the local CSUs, uh, particularly the STEM colleges. And then just a little bit, uh, I don't know if you guys want me to read the whole thing or just go through it. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. So, yep. Uh, just a big thank you to our partnership with OLA, uh, the Hispanic Organization for Leadership and Advancement, uh, for the continuous effort and push to pursue for the next waves of diverse thinkers and problem solvers. Uh, the reason why I'm here today speaking to you guys, uh, because of employee resource groups who actually fund us and, you know, uh, sponsors to go out to these events. And I just took a little screenshot from our website, from the 1RTN website, uh, basically talking about, and, you know, Ola is just one of them. Uh, there's a couple other ones, Rappa for veterans. Uh, uh, I think there's also one for Asian Pacific, uh, Asian Pacific, uh, Pacific Islanders, Asian engineers also, uh, black engineers, uh, just a bunch of them. I think I took a screenshot of all the ones, but the one in particular I, I, I represent is Ola, the one for Hispanic, because, you know, they have ties to ship South Bay. Mm -hmm. A little bit right here on the bottom also, so. Awesome. I think this is the uh, the photo you guys see on the bottom right here. This is like a hiking event from last year. Uh, we went to Crystal Cove over there in uh, Palos Verdes. So a couple of the CPP students uh, ship, as well as the uh, South Bay representatives, the big group. So I'm looking forward to future events. Uh, you know, seeing you guys in person. I know we're all social distancing right now, and <laughs> a lot of us are remote, working remotely taking classes online, but, you know, we're looking forward to more events like this, uh, more outreach events. Uh, we guys get a network with us and we get a network with you guys, you know, just, uh, just an exchange of information and knowledge base from, you know, from both, both parties from the universities and from the industry reps. So a couple of successful events that we actually had with the uh, Cal Poly Pomona with Raytheon Day 2019, 
I don't know how many people here actually participate in that, but it was actually a pretty good turnout uh, last year in February. And then in the fall, we did, I think like around October or so, we did professional development symposium also with uh, SHIP CPP. And then my presentation, which I was invited for uh, last year, I think some of you guys were there to see that. And I'm talking about the mill standard and some of the testing that I also do, which I'll elaborate on this presentation. Cool. And like I was telling you guys, a couple of the ERGs, and I, I, I'm sure that we're not the only ones that sponsor employee resource groups. I'm sure Boeing, Lockheed Martin, as well as Northrop Grumman, and all the other big aerospace defense companies, uh, they have similar uh, type or deal type uh, employee resource groups that you guys can actually be a part of. Um, these are communities within uh, the company itself where employees can actually, you know, join these groups and, you know, be a part of outreach events, volunteering events, things like that. This all sounds really you. cool. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The main one I'm involved with is Ola, but I'm also a part of YesNet. Um, if you guys actually get a job at Raytheon, you guys might want to consider also joining YesNet also uh, for Young Engineer Society. We'll keep that in note. Thank you. How about that. Definitely, definitely. I'll just read the first PowerPoint slide up here, the first uh, point that I have. So professional mentors are a great way to expand your knowledge base and ultimately contribute to your company's efforts. Um, I've seen a lot of IPTLs, which are basically uh, technical leads. Uh, subject matter experts are also just to develop their leadership skills and their communication skills also. Um, they're part of these these employee resource groups and, you know, it, it empowers employees to ultimately contribute to the company because, you know, you put a group of like-minded thinkers and then, you know, it's just an expansion of knowledge from then on out. So different cultures, different ethnicities, different races, things like that. But if you guys actually work at Raytheon's, you'll know, you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, a little bit about myself, one of the like this one in particular. So I graduated from Cal State Long Beach, uh, May 2016 with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics. Uh, I was previously electrical engineering, but uh, plans changed for myself. Uh, but I do anticipate on completing that at Cal State LA. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Cal Poly Pomona is a little too far of a drive from El Segundo from where I live. Try to fix something, something fairly close. Yeah, it, it's, it's all good. It's all good. You know, I, I, I still love you guys, so. <laughs> That's awesome. But I, I figured Cal State LA will probably be the best. Yeah, I, I figured. Cal I, I'm sorry about that, but I figured Cal State LA will probably be the best fit for myself in, in terms of the electrical engineering. I know you guys have some. I was actually talking to Jonathan. He's actually one of you guys' alumni today. And he also did electrical engineering. He's like, yeah. So I was like, man, that's too much of a drive over there. Go from El Segundo. Uh, <laughs> I probably got to do that remotely, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it, it's a well-rounded education. So yeah. Um, none taken on that, but I do, uh, I am going to be starting this semester coming up at, uh, Cal State LA. You guys could, uh, catch me there. So a little bit about my background, uh, electronics control systems, embedded systems, you know, some of the basic, uh, undergrad EE e courses, as well as I, I put down some of my, um, industry, um, my industry skill set and my industry knowledge, uh, been an AutoCAD technician, worked at the Boeing R&D lab, um, uh, uh, formerly nor, known and funded by Seattle out of Washington, yeah. And then also got a chance to do a little bit of uh, research at UC Berkeley over the summer. And then SCADA and RS Logics, which is basically used to program uh, logic controllers uh, for SJ controls. That's so good. I was a part of IEEE, SHIP, MIAS. And then also did Calvane, which is known as the beach launch team, building rockets, as you see the one right there on the bottom screen. And then the Boeing, the Boeing lab that I told you guys, this is actually still at Long Beach and still currently funded. Uh, by the Phantom Works Department up in, uh, up in Seattle, Washington, 737 to 787. Mm -hmm. so a little bit about myself. And I just wanted to take a little screenshot of my resume. Um, it's not up to date. As you can see right here, I still need to update it to actually include Raytheon and my last position at CKC Labs as an EMI EMC test engineer. But you guys can kind of see like the flow, um, the summary of what I've done, uh, some of the tasks I've actually worked on. So it, it varies for you guys. You know, these are uh, items that you guys have to bring up in interviews. 
just kind of elaborating to the to the uh, person or the, uh, the the person you'll be talking to, uh, the recruiter, whoever it may be, HR or even an engineer. In some cases, I've seen people. I think I've been involved with like um, team team interviews with engineers that I'll be working with in the group. So just a little bit of reiteration of what you actually done previously, and highlighting you guys important skill sets. Like I said, but that wasn't the goal of my presentation today. Uh, we could say that for another industry rep who can. <laughs> Next time, elaborate a little bit more about what it's like to actually build a good resume. Absolutely. Well, like I said, summarize all your key tasks, responsibilities, and all it is just a reiteration, just recall events when you do the interview. <laughs> well, as you guys can see, I've been throwing a lot of memes at the, at the day when I was like, I wanted to keep this, this <laughs> interview very fun. I know it'd be better if it was in person. Now we can joke around also too, but yeah, I wanted to throw some memes in there and actually talk to some of my buddies and like, oh yeah, go ahead and do that. Yeah, I just uh, got a lot of humor in myself. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know who you are, but I have a particular set of skills. Yeah, that's how a lot of people talk. Yeah, they're actually on the phone interviews themselves. Who am I talking to? <laughs> Definitely. But for a lot of us engineers, I mean, obviously, you guys heard of the star tap, um, the, the star method, right? Situation, task, action, results. You know, think of particular problems you solve um, in a lab environment in your guys' class, and then how does that apply to your skill set? How does that apply? And you know, they're just kind of getting a feel for what it's like that you guys can contribute to the group. Uh, that's why I included said right here syntax examples. If you guys know the MATLAB code or any kind of Python programming you know that'd be a good chance to bring it up and just talk to the interview that's really what i do too i just pick particular points on my resume you know for example i was giving them like an autocad example or something like that where i extruded the drawing you know just kind of like bringing the life of it you know what i mean bring the technicality out of it yeah definitely absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. yeah i also put right here with the oscilloscope for some of the electrical engineers Talking about the frequency measurements you guys were taking, time domains, rise times, fall times, uh, particular bands that you guys were measuring, things like that. Just make it vivid for the employer, right? Make you look like a real expert. Definitely. And, <laughs> and, and my, my suggestion, obviously, uh, I'm a little nervous right now, as you guys can tell, but it, it's been a while since I've been a student and had to do any kind of interviews. But, you know, we're looking forward to this year coming up. Uh, mock interviews, definitely a good way to alleviate the nervousness and then reiterate your resume to a recruiter or somebody you're uh, planning to get hired by. And I think I want to stress this one out too because I, I've noticed a lot of uh, my friends that are actually still students, um, they, they're very cautious about what the interviewer thinks about them. I say just don't even, you know, don't even worry about what they think about you, just go in ready to perform and ready to um, reiterate your resume. I think that's just a good idea, just to alleviate the nervousness right off the get go, just going confident, um, going dress sharp, whatever it may be to get ready, because, you know, they have tons and tons of people that they're interviewing, so you really want to make yourself stand out by being confident, just, you know, being able to display that courage from the get-go, because, you know, that is when they're judging you, so whatever it takes to make you stand out. And for me personally, I like the technical interviews, I know some of them are behavioral, like group interviews also, but I like the technical ones, I like particular examples, like textbook, something like that. Like, oh, can you webinize this circuit for me, or can you uh, uh, can you show me what the output of this op amp will be? Things like that. I was going something like basic circuit theory and things like that. That'd be too difficult. All right. So, <laughs> actually getting the job. So when you get first hired on, you guys get that email that says, "Yeah, congratulations, we're interested in recruiting you for this position." You know from. Most of you guys, it's going to happen within a year or so. Uh, wherever it may be, it doesn't have to be at Raytheon. You know, it could be a bone. <laughs> but, you know, typically you find yourself uh, getting ready for the job within the first couple of weeks, uh, whether it's getting security clearance uh, for a lot of defense contractors like ourselves, or just preparing for the job in general. I have a couple of photos right here of uh, some of the packages we build. And the photo you guys see on the right, that's actually one testing that I done last year. So we're doing a section 20 deal on 65 testing. Um, as you can see, my coworker is actually on YouTube, so we got him at a perfect moment. We can check him out. Yeah, that is the technician. I'm over there doing like notes and stuff like that on Excel. 
I, I, I think I, I think I was putting all the emissions that we exceeded for each of the IO lines and the power lines that we uh, did on the radar. And he was on like YouTube, like looking like some country music or something like that. <laughs> but the, uh, what, our customers know that took that photo, so I thought that was funny. <laughs> but he, he's actually doing work on the other screen. So that's actually uh, fine. As long as, uh, as long as the job gets done, yeah, it's absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Makes it look like something in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody told me, like, you're actually doing work, Daddy? I was like, yeah, for real. Huh? I think they disconnected YouTube for me. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So a good tool you guys can actually use on the job, and I still do uh, currently, you know, CCing each other and, you know, sharing notes and things like that, uh, learning from your coworkers and your principal engineers. Uh, for a lot of you guys, uh, what you guys don't know right now is the actual well, Probably some of you guys are familiar if you guys have interned before, but they stage you off in different levels. Uh, for us, I think level five is the highest, like G15 or something like that. But I know level five for sure uh, for EMI engineer, EMI system engineer. And essentially, I get CC'd a lot of my coworker. So I have the Mike So in there. Or like all the, they consider me like the next Mike So. He's uh, an EMI engineer that has about 33, 33 years of experience in this field. And I think Mario just shy of him with like 24, 25, 27. That's pretty close. Oh, that's cheap guy. Well, yeah, those are the two EMI engineers that I, yeah, those are the two EMI engineers that I work with. And as you can see, I only have one year experience, one I've went on two. It's going to be my, almost my second year working at Raytheon since February of last year. But good people to shadow are obviously them, you know, mimic their style, you guys. Um, kind of like what I have up there. Um, in my case, it would be like EMI test procedures, EMI test reports, EMI control plans. Uh, design documents, things like that, uh, specific packages that we're looking at for customers, and kind of like see exactly how to do their work. Um, ask them, phone call them, Skype them, whatever you guys need to. But just kind of like get that. Um, I, I've noticed a tremendous change in my style of actually presenting documents from when I originally started. I actually reflect on some of the stuff that I've done like within the first four months and how it's drastically changed to be more technical in terms of pointing out specifics from, a, uh, from a, a specific payload or satellite or something like that that we're working on radar, um, following the standards, you know, just giving them more technicality and more validity for our customer specs. So make it look like a Raytheon presentable or a Raytheon deliverable, however you guys want. But you guys have a huge list and I'm pretty sure, I mean, this is just for EMI in general. This is EMI within the whole company. This Excel spreadsheet, I took a little screenshot of it because I think that was one of my first tasks because they had me like arrange this to see where everybody was at with the EMI. Even though we don't collaborate with all of them, this is basically all the EMI engineers that we've got at. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are trying to grant you. <laughs> so what are you doing? I'm learning. <laughs> Definitely. Even in our field, I mean, I took a little screenshot of one of our, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this one came from like X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, when he touched like the TV and he's like, all of a sudden he's learning, but the reality is he's looking at the server. Yeah. That's, that's, the, 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 the screenshot on the right is actually what he's really looking at, not about his outfit. <laughs> but uh, as you guys can see, I mean, uh, my suggestion is obviously it's a, it's a big giver, you know. I'll learn from you guys a server. A lot of you guys are going to be uploading to a, a VPN or a cloud or some kind of drive that you guys are working on. Um, just take a look at the work that your previous coworkers have done, um, documentation, things like that. Just open up PDFs, open up words, and see exactly how it is that they, you know, style these documents. What kind of jargon? Uh, for me, I'm still learning a lot of the uh, acronyms and some of the terminology that we use. You know, that coincides with EMI, EMC, RFI testing. So, yeah, open Excel files, old report control document templates. Yeah, things like that. Because you don't want to, the last thing you want to do is be confused on the job when you actually start working. It's like, oh, Daniel, I gave you this assignment. Like, yeah, I wanted you to do this, this schematic. Like, oh, I had no idea how the style was. Like, oh, we had a couple of resources from like KC46 folder that you could refer to, right? So, it's going back and forth. I see. Yeah. And then for a lot of you guys also, you guys will be learning new software also. Uh, for me, it was learning Tile, which is uh, the EMC control process. Uh, it's like an automated software. So 
uh, referring to data sheets, operating manuals, things like that of the equipment, uh, spectrum analyzers, signal generators, you know, I think there was one instance where I actually just Googled because <laughs> we, we didn't know how to change the GPIB address, which is like the communication bus of one of the SIG gens up in Fort Wayne. And <laughs> it was so back far off, I think they stopped making the actual manual, like the, the hard copy of it, because like a lot of them, there's still like hard copies of it. So I literally Googled it and it actually turned out like a dip switch. It was all binary. So I was like, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, it turned out like by default, it was like 19 or something like that. You know, just even doing like a quick search of like a data sheet and just reading it, just to get the answers right away. But I put R, 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 RTFM, read the fine manual. So a lot of you. Is really helpful. I save you. I'm still reading the manual, I'm still learning the software itself. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. Oh, I pasted special so I could actually open it up, but I think I'm doing this off of my Outlook, so I can't really. <laughs> uh, if, I was, if I was doing this off my uh, Raytheon laptop, I think I'll be able to open up the bottom, the uh, paste special that I have right there, kind of like give you guys an example on the operating manual for uh, Tile, the Tile software. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> But if you guys actually work with us in the EMI lab, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we actually distribute that to our customers all the time so that they know exactly how it is and write our syntax. And I think my next slide actually has a copy of that code also for an RS-103 type test. But as you can see up here, it says practice the team software and the engineering tools while Microsoft applications. So some of the ones that I've used previously, uh, RS Logic 5000, MATLAB, obviously, Python, AutoCAD, uh, Tile is the one that we're currently using. Visio for schematics and block diagrams. Silence for FPGAs. And then NX if you're like a CAD or a mechanical designer. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, just play around with the software. Uh, read the manual, watch YouTube, whatever it is. And then pretty soon you start picking up these tools. Save your files by all means. You know, just delete them because it's a bunch of good work. You know, if you guys are in VPN, every guys is in your network. Um, mm -hmm. Save a specific folder, call it practice or something like that. But make sure you say it works so that we can keep progress of actually how much you're, how much of that software you're actually accumulating over time. And then pretty soon they're going to have you work with the customer doing it on your own. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed this, but uh, yeah, man, my uh, my landline, which is based on my office number, yeah, man, that, that gives me the chills every time. I swear, I, I don't like looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I especially like the sloths in Joe Man. I've seen videos of sloths and I absolutely love them. They're so yeah, slow. Man. Oh, this is me right here. Left. For real. It's like, no, I, think, I think that's what I searched up also, too. Boy, or if, if you go work in the office and stuff like that, man, if you work in the cubicle, I know exactly what I talk about, man. It's like, damn, like, even my coworkers get chills off that crap. It's Tony Stark. <laughs> Um, for, for real, but I, I'm thinking, man, honestly, like the next trend, the next couple of years, they got to get rid of all those freaking landlines and just give everybody an iPhone. But I, I think we'll all be in agreement with that. I'm pushing. I, I I'm actually telling my boss, and I'm putting in a ticket or whatever the hell I need to put to get you. Yeah, I think when you actually give them phones. I don't, I don't, yeah, well, well, for some people, right? For some people actually get the cell yeah. phone and stuff like that. They have a privilege to choose. Yeah, for us, we get the like the old like wire phone or whatever it is. And then we got. I think like the first couple of weeks, I had to set up my like my voicemail. And then when I'm out of the office, type things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's your voicemail, all that shit. But yeah, I hate that so much, man. There was actually like a month where I disconnected. And I was like, man, this sucks. I'm like, just call me on my phone. Just call me on my cell phone. I'm always on this thing anyways, man. So like, this is like a useless ass device. <laughs> <laughs> but no worries you guys yeah for the rest of us we're all like tony stark for some of us like myself we're like the sloth right here on the right uh, on the left so <laughs> no worries <laughs> all right you guys so there is reviews in work unfortunately i hate them uh end of the year mid-year reviews that employees go through um, basically talk about your improvements, flaws, any kind of like discrepancies or any kind of shit they complain about you within your department. And pretty much a lot of promotions too actually come out of that. Actually, a lot, it's a lot more positive than negative. I just put it back negative because <laughs> um, if you guys see this like bolded face right here, I've been identified as hyperactive for the first couple of months and inattentive to work. I actually seen that too. I was like, come on, man. I was like, I was just doing my job. 
But yeah, apparently some of my old coworkers they had complaints about me being uh all over the goddamn place. Is this something they called KPI? Key performance What's index? That? Is this something they called KPI? Key performance yes. index? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's the it's the same thing. Yeah, you gotta type up like a little survey of yourself. Where, where like it, it's basically your goals and your performance. So you're basically just filling out like a survey type deal. It was like, oh, what are you currently working on within the company? Where do you see yourself? You know, is there any kind of improvements or anything that you can get out? Of, you know, it's just it's, honestly, it's a I don't know if it's a waste of time. For some people, it's useful and stuff like that. But your manager sees this and approves it. And then every mid-year, like around May or so, and then end of the year, like around November, end of November. Actually, as a matter of fact, my boss hasn't even said anything about this November to December about our end of the year review because everybody's working from home right now. So I think we might skip it this year. When they meet up with you, and then I think last year I got like a, a 4K bonus. I was surprised too because all this shit that they were talking about me too. <laughs> but apparently the company did well. In terms of revenue, so um, <laughs> we we sold some pretty expensive packages in 2019, and obviously you guys heard about the merger with uh, United Technologies Corporation. So, yeah, just don't worry about it, man. Nine times out of ten, shit, nobody loses their job anyways. Man. Well, that's good man. to hear. I thought it was like that the first couple of instances, but it's just like it's just it's just it's just feedback, right? So you know, now I've been you know a little bit more laid back in terms of the work that I do. Um, I pay attention. I actually just follow the leads of my uh, technicians when I work with them because I'm still like a level one engineer. So I just got to follow them, even though sometimes I kind of like know exactly how it is. It's supposed to run the mill standard test, but the schematics are like right there and the procedures are like right there. But, you know, just take your pace. Um, it's still pretty heavily uh, resided on the older, on the older aspect. There's a lot more older people at Raytheon than younger people. So, you know, we'll, we'll get our chance. Of yeah, but then That's we'll be old by that time. <laughs> you guys, your parents work there? Yeah, absolutely yeah they're they're old-fashioned you know what i mean it's cool it's cool you know they don't understand our humor like the way we do and stuff like that so yeah. but that, that's why we have the employee resource group right you guys definitely absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely well yeah most of you guys would actually get that opportunity to get put into place so and then eventually you'll be leading programs and projects by your guys yourselves with a good group of people so hopefully <laughs> yeah absolutely I guess I appreciate you guys seeing this meme before. I guess like when you become an expert in astronomy, <laughs> thermonuclear astrophysics. Like, last night, yeah, I, was, I actually got ready for this presentation. Like, probably didn't uh, do like Tony Stark though. Well, I should have took like a week to prepare, but yeah, we're on the lab twenty four seven. So, but yeah. And like I said, good people to talk to also, you guys, will obviously be your principal engineers. Not necessarily a supervisor, but the people that are above you. I think you're putting you guys' work for the first couple of times. Talk to them about how you can improve your persona and your work ethic. And most of them, they were young like us once upon a time, right? So they, they, they know what it's like, you know, to be in the ropes and stuff like that. And for them, they're pretty much laid back because you know, a lot of them are ready to ride off into the sunset. They just want to make sure we're prepared to take over. All right, so the actual example, the real-world example. So I actually took a screenshot of this. I was actually looking for a couple of profiles or uh, lab view scripts. As you kind of could see, this is the things that we actually use at work. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Ops. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was like, oh, which screenshot should I share with them? Because it can't. None, none of this can actually say uh, what particularly we're testing, but I think I went ahead and I actually scrutinized it. So this is actually one that was actually in my training folder. Uh, the program name is right there, but it doesn't actually specify, you know, the F15 pod that I was actually testing for it. And it's kind of like a little dry run, so I don't think it's okay. But yeah, like you said, man, like just practice the software itself. Uh, I looked at the examples from one of the previous EMI technicians. Like, go ahead and look at this profile. So I was just dissecting it. Maybe I see like on the bottom left right here, the process tab. I actually did screw this up, so don't be afraid to make mistakes, you guys. Uh, the CW dwell time needs to be set to a millisecond or greater to actually collect some kind of uh, radiation or some kind of uh, RF measurement. I had it set to zero, so yeah, I was frustrated the first time it wasn't working. But then after afterwards, you know, I spoke with them and figured that out. But, you know, a lot of times the manual's not really specific, and this kind of software doesn't really have too many YouTube videos. I think it doesn't have any kind of wall, so... Uh, best thing you can do is actually start playing with it. Um, shadow your technicians or uh, engineers, test engineers, if you guys have any. 
if you guys work in the lab. But yeah, that CW dwell time that actually got me the first time. So I don't know everything, you guys, but it did work. Work out fine in the end. I was able to get 10 volts per meter, and then 50 volts, and then 200 volts per meter out of it uh, of electric field radiation. So this is kind of like the software that we play with that Raytheon. Perfect. Uh, Alan, one of our technicians, actually getting the ones for C102 for power lead conducted emissions ready already. Uh, I told him I had to step out early to make this presentation. I almost didn't make it. Kind of like what you guys would actually be doing, but you know, you give your guys self time and eventually it'll be massive. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. You understand what the whole Unity palette does? Oh, absolutely. And you guys can see the level right there in green, the measurements that I took all the way up to 200 megahertz or whatever frequency band you guys are going to. It's all per mil standard in DO160, so. The uh, testing specs that we use for military and space systems. <laughs> Yeah, about being an old time, right? Don't worry, you guys. <clears throat> you guys have plenty of time to master all this. I'm still giving myself plenty of time to actually be good at the the testing specs that we do, the mill standard 461. Uh, 464, 704, power characteristics, things like that. So every day, you know, just learning. Whenever I have some downtime, just go open up the PDFs, keep reading them. I think right now I'm like covering RS-105, which is electromagnetic 10 cell testing. Uh, we don't have the equipment in-house, or I think we rent that equipment, but it's kind of good, you know, background knowledge in case one day we actually have to do an EMP burst test within the lab. Uh, kind of like my note says right there, pace yourselves every day on the job and ask your manager, supervisor, what's the next task you can support. And a lot of times they already have, they already have that figured out since they schedule you, uh, which projects you're going to be supporting, which programs you're going to be supporting. Uh, for example, I think they already have me scheduled for like next year, and I'm still following up with our customers for another shielding effect in this test. And then they also had me working on B52. So it's a little screenshot. <laughs> like I said, I was, you know, trying to be too picky on what exactly what I said because there's stuff that's illegal that I can't send to you guys and the stuff that is. But you guys kind of see it, you know, mill standard 461G. And the table itself actually outlines all the mill standard tests. So what comes with that? I have to write a set of test procedures. Or like CS101, 114, 115, 116, RS103, RE103. So you guys can kind of imagine, even though there's not work to find already, you guys kind of get that idea. It's kind of like, it, it's common sense that that's what's going to happen because even it says right there, 461G. You know what I mean, guys? E even though the, the task haven't been assigned to you guys, you kind of, you guys kind of imagine what you're going to be working on next. So, yeah, don't even trip about it. Got it. Definitely. And then the other one is obviously what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna probably have to draft the test report also. And these are all the testing that we're doing on it. So yeah, yeah plenty of time. As a matter of fact, I think the, the end date is like second week of December for the one we're currently working on right now, the one that I was working in the lab and then come over here. So and right now they're still they're still setting up the uh, payload in the lab so, and nothing to, nothing to work about. <laughs> time dilation. Travel to a distant planet, you come back and you're a lot younger, right? Most of us are like this old man right here. Is this true though? Oh, what happened? Is this true? Like when you go to space, you actually age, age slower? Time dilation? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you were traveling like close, like relatively close to the speed of light, right? I think, yeah. Uh, like for some of the double blues we had to take. Did, yeah, for some of us physicists and double blues. They did an experiment with the uh, twins and that's what happened, but. The, the, the twin paradox, right? Yeah. I think one of them was like traveling on a plane, right? And they had a clock with them or something like no, that. No, no, no. One of them was uh, like an astronaut that was, that is sent in space. Oh, that, that's right. That's right. That was, a, that was an actual problem. In the book, no, they actually right? did it, I think. Yeah. Oh, for real? You should look it up. Oh, snap. You can take a look at it. Hey, it was two twins, right? Yeah, two twins. And then they, you know, the one that came out of space I'm a, I'm a... was a little bit younger than, you know, the one who stayed on Earth. But uh, yeah, you should look it up. I think it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I I know there was one of the uh, the actual clock themselves. I think they did that one like back in like the twenties or thirties or something like that. Where when they started uh, studying modern physics, I think that was in the uh, Sixth Sense for physics, the textbooks itself. And <laughs> they, I I know the one for the airplane where they put the two clocks, like one was on the Earth and the other one traveled around the world. 
and it turns on the one that was actually traveling around the world in the air then the airplane was actually a couple seconds uh slower than the one that actually was on the ground still stationary when they had a flat plane fly around that's pretty cool yeah uh, on the nutshell you guys you guys have plenty of time to be a master of this so no, no need to wait like you, like i said you guys' tasks are pretty much defined, even though they haven't told you yet. You guys can kind of imagine what it is you guys will be working on next in industry. The charge number is universal, and they keep giving it to you. All right. And a little bit about this thing, John. I'll put this little example up here, the bandpass filter. So narrow your focus. <laughs> you want that frequency. You can see right, F2 and F1. So just that way, you focus to your actual objectives. Uh, your concentration and skills should ultimately lead to your survival, which is true. Uh, for a lot of us, I mean, for my field in particular, they expect me to be good at EMI, EMC, and that's what I'm going to give to the company, right? And then just a couple resources of what we actually use on the job, ETS Lindgren, Amplifier Research, Keysight, Roden Schwartz, Solar Electronics, websites that I overuse constantly on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm good at and good at actually making our customers aware. They pay me fairly off that. I like that photo from uh, John Wick with their part. It's cool though, John Wick. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, you guys, I'm leaving the floor to you guys. <laughs> so don't ask me how old I am. Yeah, that was just. Oh, so, yeah, feel free hey, to ask me whatever you guys want. I have a question. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, when you're first starting out at Raytech, um, how long? Did you have like a trial period where they just show you the ropes and how long was that for? Like, is like, are you talking about like a specific time? No, like when you first starting out. When time you period or is there like a probationary period you're talking about? Something like that. With, with the customer? No, we have like, um, like with your supervisor, your coworker teaching you, teaching you the ropes, like to make you feel more comfortable working in the company or something like that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what by all means, I mean, every company is different in itself, but obviously utilizing the employees that you, you have there, I mean, they've been working longer than, than you have. I mean, for most of us, we're just starting off a year or two of no experience. So, um, yeah, best thing you can do is just wing them. I mean, just follow them in the lab. I mean, I'm still following the technician that I'm working with right now, even though we're kind of like the same, on, nah, I wouldn't say like necessarily the same level, but we're doing the same amount of work. I still question what he does because he has, you know, 25 plus years working as an electrician, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about, Jake? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, best right. thing you do, I mean, the, the other EMI technician we have is also, he's he's 80 years old, Chikai. And mm -hmm. he's kind of the guy who's actually taught me how to use that. He's, he's still working, he's 80 years old. I'm like, God damn, like. Dang. Nobody tells him? No, no. Nobody tells him anything. Um, he's gonna be retired in the next couple of years, kind of. Yeah, but he can still run a gun. I mean, by all means. I mean, he's like one of our brightest technicians, and freaking, I think I think he's the only one that's very cognizant on the equipment we use. Like, he doesn't even use like the old manuals. He just knows knows the instruments, right? The eighty five, sixty six, eighty five, sixty five, sixty four. Some of the old HP, you know, analyzers and sig gens. I think there was one where I had to like, change the address. <laughs> the same thing with the address, right? You need the address because that's how you build your your com bus, right? With the GPIB cable, and he did like control U or something like that, or system U, like this weird button, but like you couldn't even find that shit in the manual. But he just knows that stuff, you know what I mean? Because he was around when it was built. <laughs> All right, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, no worries. Any other people have questions? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is just like open floor right here for you guys. So feel free to ask me whatever. I mean. Um, I'll be nonchalant. I'll, I'll be full, uh, straightforward and honest with you guys. Well, I have a question, Daniel. Hey, how's it going, William? Yeah, uh, when in the beginning, when you went through the interview process and then you uh, glossed over the uh, behavioral and the technical interview, mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate more on like how they, how you discern the differences between a behavioral and a technical uh, interview and like? Would they tell you if it's a behavioral or a technical interview? Absolutely. I think behavioral is just more on your persona itself. I'm not too familiar with the behavioral one, but I know mine was more like a technical. And they were basically asking me, like, the equipment that I used. Actually, when I got hired on Raytheon, the interview was set. actually pretty quick. I actually got hired in, like, 10 minutes. 
only because I already had experience doing EMI and C work uh, for CKC Labs, which was my previous uh, position itself. I think my boss at the time, Rick Reeser, he asked me about the uh, E4446 spectrum analyzer, just, you know, just going through like, the utilities, the basic setups. I mean, he's a spectrum manager himself, but he's like, okay, this guy knows how to use a piece of equipment, just cool, just like that. Like, I kid you not, like, everybody else is, like, getting interviewed for, like, hours or more. But it was just because I was already cognizant on, you know, immunity and mission, uh, mission processes. I was able to get it. Um, Behavior-wise, I don't know, the kind of... Uh, I don't want to take the floor on that one. I think that's more for, like, HR. HR does behavior and stuff like that. So I want to leave that one. But the technical one, I mean, I'm pretty sure in your guys' field, it's going to be, like, group interviews and things like that. You'll probably interview with one or more engineers. If you guys interview with a supervisor or something like that who doesn't know what the hell these you know, you're supposed to be doing on the job, then you guys are pretty much golden because you're just going to give you an A+, plus, right? Yeah. But if you, guys, if you guys actually interview with the actual engineers themselves, like myself, then we'll ask you, like, in depth, like, some, some of the positions that we worked with or some of the programs that we worked with also. Uh, if you've done no standard testing, DL-160, for example, if you try to shoot the analog circuits, um, difference between... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. No, 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 no. The, oh. the floor is all yours, William. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really big expert on, on behavior. That's why I said I don't really take behaviors. Um, there was a cheat sheet. I got to actually look up for it. They actually gave us a cheat sheet. Like, the last time we actually went to Raytheon Day with you guys, they actually wanted us to do behavior, but I actually kind of switched it up on them and did more technical. And I kind of like that one better, so. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I was I was doing some um, some applications and then uh, one of them emailed me back for like a thirty minute chat so I didn't, I don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when they say chat, I'm like, oh, it's casual, but like I don't want to be too casual. Oh, absolutely. Hey Daniel, I think my favorite part of the uh, the slides were the memes. I'm really happy that you brought this in. It's always exciting to get a little bit of uh, just human condition life into that. I have a question for you regarding, if you're familiar with it, the um, the security clearance process. Are you able to speak to what the A to Z process is like going through a security clearance? Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I actually have quite a bit of experience with that, mainly because I have went through like a freak. Again, brutal. Well, it wasn't a brutal interview itself. Well, what you end up doing is you end up obviously like the first couple. I didn't have a security clearance when I started when I got hired on weekend. Actually, my boss uh, put me up, and I think in our cases we usually get a program to sponsor you. So, in my case, there was a Galita program and an electronic warfare program that actually said, "Go ahead and say, yeah, we'll pay the thirty grand for this guy to get a security clearance." So they paid the thirty grand. Um, this was ALR sixty nine, which does like uh, CSPs and radar receivers uh, for Galita's electronic warfare systems for like F 18s uh, tanker type jets. So that was. The whole thing. Uh, I think if you search up like SF86 or KIP1, we'll give you guys more information on that. Um, but yeah, it's typically it's about like seven months to like a year. You guys actually get that. Uh, in the meantime, you guys will be doing unclassified work. Uh, you know, you do a little bit of classified work, a little bit of you know, top uh, secret, not top secret. Uh, top secret's another level, and I think that's like a year or three to get. But for my case, for security clearances, like a red badge, most of you guys will see red badges and things like that. Um, so they do a little background check. Um, your family, your education, your work history, things like that. And then on the interview themselves, uh, yeah, the interview, the actual lady came in and actually interviewed me and was asking me about my ex-girlfriend. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I kid you not, I brought that shit up. I think one of my buddies actually got uh, marijuana, but my kids, my ex-girlfriend's like, <laughs> So are you aware if the, uh, call or discuss anything with any of your close friends or family members do they keep that secret from you i think a couple of them actually said they were actually contacted i think my friend ozzy said he was contacted my boy enrique for sure said he was contacted also so i'm just like yeah i've known daniel and he's like how long have you known daniel like, i've known daniel for more than five years and in my case i think i put him down for like six or seven or something like that mm -hmm. nine years i know him for like nine years already since like i started cal state long so <laughs> Most of them, they don't know. They just call you up and like, yeah, yeah, just whatever the hell they said. That's true. But um, yeah, they do contact me occasionally. Not all the time, but I think it's more like the actual interview itself. So yeah, I got interviewed during testing. Actually, the photo that I showed you guys, I was actually during that time. And they they came into uh, 
And they came into the lab, the lady came in, I had a letter in, escort her, and she, I took her to like the conference room or whatever, and she was basically asking me questions on like previous way. And then at the time I got fired from like, because I actually I did, I did get fired, I got terminated from SJ Controls. But yeah, I'm like, shit. But just be honest with them. If you guys smoke weed, you guys, you know, you guys fuck with Molly, whatever, maybe just be honest. And nothing's really gonna happen to you guys in just terms of honesty, but um, they do do a polygraph test for you guys. If you guys get ST, which is like special uh, specialty testing, or if you guys get a top secret clearance, they actually do screen you on the polygraph. Wow, um, that's, that sounds uh, intimidating to have a polygraph. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'm very really looking forward to that. If they, if they do actually, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna be needed for top secret work eventually afterwards after my uh, principal engineers. Day. Uh, that sounds pretty exciting. Like, I'm going to have you doing top super stuff. But like, absolutely. But nothing to be nervous. Just be completely honest. I guess it's once. Don't lie about anything. I mean, even if it's embarrassing, you guys had a strain or whatever it may be. Or you guys got caught messing around with meth or whatever. Just, I mean, it's between you and the interviewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how long do you retain a security clearance? Do you have to recertify after X amount of years? Uh, I think 10 years. For like the standard red badges, security clearance. Uh, uh, secret. Mm-hmm. For a classification secret level, yeah, every ten years. Well, that, that's a that's a long time. Yeah. That's good yeah, quite a while. Been, I think all they do is like pick. Yeah, I don't think they maybe pay like thirty grand. I think they make pay like three or five or something to scare them. Um, unless you've done something like really really drastic, like you did DUI or killed somebody, then they will look it for me. Or if you guys marry, you know, I'm sorry, if you guys marry an international person, like a, you know somebody somebody that's foreign, um, you guys have to actually notify them. Somebody that isn't a U.S. citizen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, and yeah. for those, so, sorry if my uh, it's cutting in and out, so I'm not exactly sure when to talk and when to stop. So uh, I, I feel like you're actually going through the process right now, Albert. What's that? No worries. No, no, I kind of feel like oh, you're actually really? going through the, uh, the interview process. Yeah, uh, uh, I, right. I'm not sorry, it's, it's just cutting in and out. I apologize. Uh, it's not working out too well for me to, to talk right now on the Zoom for whatever reason. Um, but oh, no, for those good. who are also first generation, uh, do they essentially go in depth into their family's uh, uh, or origin, etc.? I wouldn't know necessarily because uh, both my parents are citizens. But I don't think I would actually go too into depth on that matter. I don't know if a lot of some people it actually does affect them, but. Yeah, that'd be a good one. I think you gotta ask one of my buddies that actually did that. Yeah, I'm saying it depends. Just be honest about it and whatnot. I mean, if you don't have to share that information, don't share it by all means. If it can alleviate your chance, but I mean, most of the times, nine times out of ten, they go, I don't know who your parents were, if they're still alive or deceased. So just just be honest with it. Um, yeah, you follow up with me on that question, Albert. Oh, it, it's fine. I, I thought your answer was I appreciate it. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I would uh, I would suggest, honestly, the whole way through, you have to be honest the whole way through, because if you're caught behind, that can revoke your chances, and yeah, you won't get one to be stuck on yellow badge. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just be honest. But if you don't have to share that information, by all means, don't share it. If it doesn't ask you on the e-kit form, like the actual form that you fill online, or the PDF, whatever it is that you're submitting, um, just don't open it down if it doesn't require you to. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, you know, they, 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 they can't question you on anything that isn't there. Actually, as a matter of fact, everything that they question you is based on your, your answer, right? To the form, your background. Great. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, Albert. Hey, do, do any other people have questions right now? William? Or, uh, because we kind of got some questions ready. And I kind of have to go soon, Daniel, so we'll have another class right now. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, so I'm just going to post them in chat. And uh, if you have time, you can try to answer them. But uh, let me see. Let me, let me open up. So some people are actually chatting right now. Oh, okay. Some pe oh, people are actually typing these questions, right? Yeah. Okay. So okay I kind of got cool, them cool. ready because you know, not everyone could show up at like six o'clock or something, so we just got the medical the club and get any of such questions. Definitely, definitely. So I just started in like chronological order. 
I'll, I'll try to be brief as much as I can. I don't know how much time we actually have, or if anybody has lecture later on today. But I'll start off with the first one. So I got a couple messages. So how does your involvement with organization, uh, your involved, help you with your current job? I mean, just uh, being outspoken, um, being, being developing leadership still still uh, I'll be a part of outreach uh, events uh, putting myself in uncomfortable situations <laughs> kind of like this one no, I'm just kidding. but um <laughs> yeah the, the current ways that I'm a part of uh shit minus I mean traditionally I'm you know pretty much invited back to every university uh, but for some reason I get less and less invites back to Cal State Long Beach like they forgot about me but yeah, I'm just yeah um my, by all means uh join employee resource groups you feel good uh, for all of them they do outreach events uh like volunteer events um, to do like camping drives, uh, volunteering at, at like a homeless shelter, things like that, or you know, uh, camping distributions. I haven't really taken too much part of that, more like you know, uh, going out to ship events, but you know, just just, just building up my confidence and my communication skills. You know, as you can see, a, a lot of us still have practice, but, you know, we're really good at the technical attributes of the job, but, you know, just being a well rounded leader. Some of you guys, you guys might be in manager positions for others. It might be more of a technical, you know, technical aspect, uh, level four, level five, and seniority level where you actually be really good at the standards that you can actually spell it out word by word to your customers. So that, that, that's how my involvement with the orgs themselves, and just being more well-rounded employee. So how do we find a mentor who can we can shadow? Uh, nine times out of 10, somebody within your group, uh, particularly a program that you're working with. Um, in my case, to be you know, my principal engineer, but, you know, it's a lot of times it's, you know, friends from around. Um, I met a couple people from Ola, from SHIP, who also worked at Raytheon, too, so. Um, I consider young people also my mentors. Some of them actually know stuff that I did, so. I saw a lot of them, uh, Juan, Jasmine, uh, some of my fellow peers, uh, Wesley, uh, UC Santa Barbara alumni, so, yeah. You don't necessarily have to consider the old people mentors, but also the young people also, too, who can make you a, a more more efficient and better better engineer. So what would be the best time to apply for Chatter Rating of any time? Honestly, any time. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't suggest doing it like in the heavy trends when people graduate, because a lot of people look for jobs like, you know, July timeframe or so. Now, I got hired like, I think I applied for my job like November, and I was like a wave of like, people that are, you know, just graduating in December time. So people that are just graduating like the fall semester, you know, people that didn't walk in the spring. Well, you know, anytime is the best time to fight for it. They're always hiring you. Wow. Uh, so how are interviews being conducted in this online format? Um, yeah, I think it depends on the recruiter itself. In my case, I think my supervisor, uh, my, my boss, my manager, Vernell Mitchell, he told me he's just doing uh, basic Skype interviews. We do everything with Skype. We don't even do it through Zoom. We do it with Skype. And same thing. Uh, he's just asking questions. I think he's more involved with the behavior. But like I said, I only have an answer for behavior because... You know, I'm more of a technical type person. I'm the guy that actually goes down with schematics and, you know, you know, tell me an example with C101 exam I mean, that you actually done on the EET or something like that. But, yeah, I mean, they're doing it for Skype, I would say so. Um, how are the job prospects looking in the current environment due to COVID? We're still hiring. Guys, no, no worries on that end. I think we actually just hired shit. Last time I wanted to get my badge renewed because I actually want to go get a new badge, like, although it was chipping off. Dude, I saw like literally like 25 engineers, freshmen. They're all getting the badge around the same time I was. I was like, holy crap. And they're all staring at me. I was like, oh, damn. I was just walking to E7 like a normal day. And I'm like, oh, like, should I come back later? It's like, yeah. I had 25 people like waiting outside like a Black Friday line. And then projects you have worked on as an engineer at Raytheon. Uh, various projects. I worked on countermeasure signal processors. Uh, power supply units, power distribution units, uh, INSs, basic signals, cables, cable shielding. Uh, we've done shielding effectiveness testing on an actual pod structure where a bunch of avionics and signal processors go inside. And that was really fun. Um, the biggest ones I do, or I work on at, Ray, uh, at Raytheon right now at the moment are radars, APG-79 radars, APG-89 radars. I guess feel free to take your side also. I haven't done anything with missile systems, but yeah, just a lot of radars on the military side. Um, project work on. Uh, what is the work environment like? I work in a basement. <laughs> Some office space is in a basement. It is also so back so 
So if I have set up, I got my computer right there, all that equipment locked into the chambers themselves and we run the test like that. Into COVID, oh, um, I think this is a good one right here. How's it currently working? It's dead. Like, <laughs> there's only a handful of employees actually. That's why I told you I'm very fortunate that I actually get to drive the hospital every day. Or I can work from home, but most of the time I'm needed in the office because we're kind of like short staff and I, I support the testing. But yeah, um, there's currently like 500 employees on site right now, so it's, it's less and less. All my friends, everybody that I know from the are working from home. A lot of them are designers, electrical, mechanical. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm very fortunate walking around in the empty facility. <laughs> That's true, though. But yeah, I do work in my basement. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's dead. Like, don't worry, you guys feel the same way too. You guys are taking, you know, lectures online. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much the same. Like our office area is like empty. Like I think there's like every every Friday I pretty much work by myself. Like every Friday I'm like in the lab by myself. It kind of makes me feel like I should I even drive on Fridays to work? Like I'm I'm literally in in the basement by myself, just um, you know doing procedures, the reports, or answering like so. Uh, are you required to travel? The, the fun aspect about it, tra um, actually working for a gun, you do get paid to travel. So, hotel, cars, food, all that's taken care of by the company. Um, for Raytheon, I've been to Indiana and Florida to witness testing, also perform testing for some of our customer payloads. And yeah, so beautiful part. Uh, unfortunately, you guys can't travel as an intern. You guys have to be full-time employee because it's li it's liability to the company. Yeah, I know. There's there's an intern right now that he's he's itching to actually travel, but I told him just wait up, man. Wait, till you graduate in a year or two. Uh, a little MLO from Cal State LA. Yeah, he's like, man, I want to travel already. I want to go to McKinney. I'm like, sorry, man. If anything, I probably uh, if you guys do travel for the company, I'll work. Most likely, you have to go with somebody that's hired full on, like myself, or somebody else that's actually a full-time employee, uh, just liability purposes. So you get opportunities like that. Uh, conferences. Uh, if you get sponsored to go to conferences, like, for example, like engineering symposiums, uh, you know, like ship, ship conferences or like Maya symposiums, things like that, um, you have to submit a voucher that the company pays for or like a, like a proposal, kind of why they should take care of the bill. But nine times out of ten, they actually do pay for it. Um, a little bit about the work I do as an E3 systems engineer, uh, working on LiDAR. I, I work on radars, not necessarily uh, light detection. Uh, radio systems. Uh, I just work on radio and well, radar, radio and detection systems, but our, just mostly everything dealing with RF in general. Uh, we test from 10, uh, ending up from like 30 hertz all the way up to 40 gigahertz, so I think that frequency range. And a lot of what I do as an E3 systems engineer, uh, particularly on the engineer design part, just getting customers units prepped up for testing, but in the actual test environment themselves, uh, we run everything off of our TCA D160, which is like commercial airspace, uh, testing all the sections, uh, particularly dealing with uh, electrical characteristics. And then MIL standard, MIL standard 461G is the biggest one that we use. That's one of the more recent ones, but all it is is just a bunch of conducted emissions, radiated emissions, radiated susceptibility, radiated emission type testing. Uh, you're trying to characterize uh, an electronic unit for interference pattern it passes a limit or if it could withstand a, a specific tolerance, specific R tolerance that you inject at it or transmit at it. Uh, kind of like the example that I showed you guys with the RF profile or the uh, tile profile. And thank you. Thank, right, you, everyone. thank you very much, Daniel. Absolutely. Yeah, I know a lot of guys have class right now. Hey, Daniel, I have one last question, actually. Yeah. Um, before you actually got hired for Raytheon, uh, what hobbies or, like, work did you do outside of school to get that job? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, as you can see in my previous slide, I was actually involved with a handful of projects at Cal State Long Beach. Um, mm -hmm. I built rockets, um, built the Formula One cars. So, you know, things like that keep myself occupied. I know it's engineer-wise. Mm -hmm. When I'm not doing engineering, I mean, some of my personal hobbies include going to the gym, um, just kicking it with friends. As you can tell, I'm very social myself. So I do go to a lot of bars. I do go to a lot of clubs. So you can make it happen. But specific-wise, you know, doing research on campus. I was involved in a lot of labs 
as an engineer student and as a physics student. So find these these involvements you can get involved with and you 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 actually get a feel for what it's like. It's actually like that in industry times ten, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it looks good on a resume. Makes it seem that you're going above and beyond what's actually required from you, not just the theoretical, but more of the application part of it. And then pretty soon you guys will start playing with equipment, hands on, everything like that, building, working with wire strippers, working with conduits, you know, building the stuff in the actual lab. But it, it's a lot like your lab classes. So I would say definitely go reach out for that, um, those extracurricular activities so you guys can get involved. And then I look forward to actually interviewing that, that aspect of it on your resume. If you guys do an interview with me or whichever one of my colleagues happen to take your resume and recruit you for the group. Thanks. Thank you. Definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we have to wrap this up. Uh, I think oh, we kind of, <laughs> I think we kind of over overshoot our initial oh, absolutely, time. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so, very much, Daniel, for for no coming. No worries, no worries. I look forward to present. seeing you guys. Absolutely, you guys take it easy. I look forward to seeing you guys in person next year. Let's hope this. We, mm-hmm. we get, yeah, absolutely. That's where we, we can the campus. Definitely, I'll, I'll be I'll be around. Don't worry, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel, for coming. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you so much it. for Appreciate sharing you your experience. Me. Thank you, guys. Till next time. Please have a good night. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel.